Kit from Access Community Capital Fund, and I'm going to share my uh, presentation here, which we'll go through. And we will be talking about the foreign credential recognition loans program that we offer for internationally educated professionals or internationally trained professionals like yourselves who are looking to get yourselves back into your professional um, career here in Canada, uh, as far as nursing is concerned. Uh, and I do understand that you do need to go through that process of licensing and you do need to pay for uh, the courses uh, and for any other associated expenses. Uh, and that may be challenging initially if you are just settling in or just arrived in Canada and uh, have to deal with all the other um, costs associated with settling here. So this is a program that we offer, which is funded by the government of Canada to make it easier for uh, internationally educated professionals uh, who are looking to relicense or to relaunch their careers here to make it easier a little bit to uh, facilitate that financial assistance in, in the, by way of a loan, an affordable loan that can help them uh, get that process started uh, you know, in a short uh, time frame uh, in order to achieve the goals that you have set out for yourselves uh, much sooner than later. Okay, so I'm just going to, that's my, con that's my contact information. So if you uh, do need to reach out to me, you can uh, certainly do so. Uh, you're welcome to check out our website at uh, accessccf.com. Uh, and uh, I'll be happy to connect with you to share any, uh, to answer any questions or to clarify. Hopefully today's session will address any questions you might have and uh, you will have a clear and overall idea of what to expect in terms of uh, the application process and the requirements of the, uh, the program itself. So who we are, Access Community Capital Fund, we are a registered charity. Uh, based in Toronto, and we work with uh, individuals who face financial barriers, who want to relaunch their careers here in Canada, or to start uh, profitable and sustainable businesses in, uh, in Canada as well. So by financial barriers, we're talking about um, those issues or those uh, things that make it uh, a, a bit more challenging to get a loan through traditional lenders like the banks, or other financial institutions or other programs. And especially for newcomers or for internationally trained professionals, it's mainly regarding credit, uh, not having uh, credit history in Canada, uh, which is one of the big uh, uh, parts of uh, uh, securing any financial help or any loan or credit in Canada is to have uh, 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 established credit in Canada and established credit, but also good credit. But uh, for us, we work with those who don't have uh, that credit history or do not have uh, you know, not necessarily the credit uh, profile that the banks would consider uh, for someone uh, looking to get uh, a loan through them. So this program, as I mentioned, is funded through the government of Canada, and it's specifically for the purposes of enabling individuals such as yourselves to get through your licensing uh, without, with, uh, with as much uh, minimal um, uh, stress as possible in terms of where you would likely need to come up with the funds uh, in order to pay for that. So we facilitate in part uh, affordable loans uh, for career development uh, and uh, for business startups, as well as uh, provide uh, business training to individuals who are looking to uh, start their own businesses as well. In, so that's a, a, an overview of what at Access we do, and you can check out more information about the other programs that we have on offer uh, at our website, and I'll share in the chat uh, a little bit later on uh, the link where you can uh, go and then you can scan and uh, get more information about uh, our programs. So now let's talk about the foreign credential recognition loans, uh, which uh, is the subject of our information session today. Uh, this is a program that allows newcomers or internationally trained professionals like yourselves who are looking to relicense or to go through the licensing process so that you can uh, become uh, a registered nurse here and you're able to practice again in Canada. 
uh, to help you with uh, the funds that you would need to pay for those uh, expenses, uh, whether it's your, your exams, whether it's your courses, your uh, any other associated expenses, including uh, living expenses. So the amount that you can borrow up to uh, is up to 15,000 through this program and through uh, um, uh, th this uh, uh, loan program. And, you know, we look at individuals like yourselves who have uh, already started that process or looking to start that process. And you may have uh, no credit history, you may not, you may have uh, limited credit history, or you might not, you might not be in a good uh, uh, situation, uh, whether it's your low income or uh, experiencing um, certain issues that prevent you from uh, getting funding through other sources. But this is a program specifically meant to assist you directly uh, for the purposes of getting yourself situated in your careers uh, here in Canada. And this loan program supports both regulated and non-regulated professions. And I understand uh, healthcare and you, in particular nursing is regulated. So that's why you need to go through this licensing that you are required to do so. So maximum you can borrow through this is 15,000 and that will cover any costs associated with, the, with your licensing process, whether it's the course the fees, the exam fees or any course materials that you may need. Um, I know some uh, in, uh, clients that we have helped who are going through nursing, uh, they indicated that they may need some uniforms or other uh, such, uh, you know, requirements to get them through uh, the, their, their process. So the program itself is designed to make sure that it addresses the pro problem of unemployment and underemployment among newcomers in Canada. So to make it easier, to make it easier to expedite the process of uh, newcomers or internationally trained professionals to get uh, back into their uh, original careers that they were in uh, outside of Canada or uh, establish new careers as well in Canada if they so choose to do so. And you know, in that process, uh, allowing you to quickly transition uh, into those uh, careers as quickly and as painlessly as possible, especially when it comes to uh, easing the financial burden uh, for finding or saving for those uh, courses uh, in order to pay for uh, the credentialing or the certification costs required uh, by also uh, uh, making it uh, uh, available uh, to cover uh, living expenses uh, if the uh, if if the total allows uh, for that as well. So, looking at eligibility in terms of who qualifies through this program, uh, you can be a, a citizen, you can be a permanent resident, or a convention refugee or protected person who has a notice of decision from uh, IRB, the Immigration Refugee Board. So, you have gone for your hearing. Uh, this program does not um, assist uh, claimants, so we won't be able to assist claimants uh, who are still awaiting their hearing. But once you've gone for your hearing and you're now at that convention refugee phase uh, status, then we are able to assist uh, at, 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 you know, from that point on. And the other requirement is that you must demonstrate that you do have a qualification from outside of Canada. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, in, in, in this case, uh, as a nurse, so you would have likely obtained your qualifications outside of Canada, uh, depending on where you are and where you came from, and uh, that would need to be shown whether it's at your degree or diploma or your certifications or your certi uh, certificates, and you must be a resident of Ontario, and you must be over 18 and have a legal right, uh, right to work in Canada. And then the other piece is about the, uh, the financial need, like what, what is it that you need the funds for? And in this case, we know that it's for your, um, for your uh, licensing. And uh, we know that you're going to go through that and then we'll assess all the other aspects that are required for us to process the application. And the other last point there is, if you've been in Canada long enough to be eligible to pay your taxes, you must uh, demonstrate that you are in good standing with the Canada Revenue Agency or CRA, uh, because that you know it makes it, it makes it a little bit easier to process the application. If you owe taxes and you you know it's a quite uh, sizable amount and that you have not yet paid or have no arrangement in place to pay yet, then uh, you know we would want to see that arrangement uh, in place. 
uh, whether it's uh, a structured payment uh, with CRA that demonstrates that you will be paying uh, off that uh, uh, taxes owing. Why we emphasize on taxes is because government takes precedence over any uh, creditor in Canada. So if you owe, uh, you know, whether it's a credit card, or whether it's another uh, loan uh, outstanding, uh, you know, uh, um, CRA takes precedence. And, and they too have the power to freeze your account if you do not, uh, if you demonstrate that you, you do have access to funds, but have not just been able to uh, honor uh, your tax bill. So that's uh, sort of the general overview of what uh, the eligibility looks like. And of course, you need to just uh, you know uh, demonstrate that you are uh, you know you're going into your licensing and you've got all the um, you know the the pathway set uh, for you to take and to follow that, and then we can begin that process. So in terms of what comes next uh, once you uh, you know uh, uh, pass the eligibility test is to uh, uh, submit your application, which can be done online on our website. And this allows uh, us to then start processing your application uh, with uh, the required documents uh, having been submitted. So one of those is a credit report and a score, which you can obtain from Equifax. Uh, and in this case, if you are new you or not yet in Canada and you don't have uh, a credit uh, report, that's fine. Uh, and you, you can still, we can still process your application because we know that uh, it, 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 that's the case and you, you're not yet in a position to uh, have a credit uh, report or score. So that won't be a, a you know, uh, that won't exclude you from the process of applying. Equifax and TransUnion are the two main credit reporting agencies in Canada. And why we request you to provide your own credit report is that it does not impact your credit uh, score at the time of applying, uh, because we'll use that copy to just assess uh, overall your financial situation uh, so that we can determine uh, the best way to uh, move forward, especially in regards to risk associated with uh, you, you being able to meet uh, your obligations uh, that you already have. Uh, and the, I mentioned the notice of assessment, if you're eligible to do your taxes, uh, and uh, those who are new, as I mentioned, uh, it does not disqualify you to if you've been if you've been in Canada for two days, uh, it means you can still uh, uh, apply. Uh, it does not. Uh, there's no time frame, specific time frame uh, that we will look at. Now, the other requirements are around, uh, you know, identity, uh, your identity, identification, your copies of your um, if you're a PR, we'll need your PR, both lies uh, back the back and the front. Uh, you know, a, a driver's license or a passport, whether it's your international passport uh, or in the combination of another government issued ID, your proof of address, uh, which can be uh, submitted through other documents that you're already submitting, like your bank statements, um, your official letter of uh, acceptance from, uh, you know, whether it's uh, the program or uh, and then copies of your degrees or your diplomas and then details of your courses and the associated costs that you would uh, uh, be needing to cover. And all of that is structured in the application. So as you go through the application, you'll see that it will ask those that information. And then after submitting, you'll then uh, submit all the required documents following that. So now let's look at the uh, structure of the loan itself. You, you know, you uh, determined all the eligibility, you've uh, you know submitted your application, um, perhaps for the maximum amount, uh, we will then take a look at that just to assess that all of the uh, costs that you've uh, uh, asked for are uh, in, in sync and are all uh, relevant costs. Uh, the, you know, the maximum, as I mentioned, is for 15,000 that you can borrow. The currently the interest rate is at 5.10%. And this is determined by the prime rate, which is 3.2%. That's the one that changes. So you notice that that's in brackets because it has actually gone up twice since March. Uh, and uh, it, 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 pre COVID, it was at 2.45% uh, during, and during COVID. And now it's at 3.20%. So that determines the overall uh, interest rate. Uh, if that changes again, um, it means that that will uh, be, uh, you know, affect the overall interest rate. Uh, but if you do apply like within this time frame, when the uh, current interest rate is at 5.10%, that's the one that will be uh, 
you know, applied and that was the one that we'll work with. Uh, you have up to four years to repay the loan. So, you know, four years to repay this loan. And the first 15 months uh, after you actually get the loan uh, and you have been approved, you've gone through the process and you've been approved and you get the funds, you, uh, the first 15 months from the date of uh, dispersal of the funds. So for example, let's uh, use today, you've all been approved and now today you got your, you signed your loan agreement and you got your funds today. Uh, it means that the 20th of each month, uh, starting June 20th will be your minimum payment, uh, interest only payment. And looking at the 15,000 uh, right now at the current interest rate, you're looking at about $65 uh, minimum payment a month for the first 15 months. Uh, so that's how the, the, the structure of the repayment is. And this is meant to make it easier for you to, you know, while you're going through your courses, you're not working yet, or maybe you're in, um, in limited uh, employment uh, with limited income. It just makes it easier a little bit for you to manage the costs or the repayment uh, of, the, uh, of the loan. And then at, uh, after 15 months, what will happen is that we'll uh, assess to see where you are with your progress of your licensing, whether you've found a job yet, because at that point, the loan is supposed to convert to principal and interest payments. And now at that point, uh, because of what it, it, the um, breakdown of the payments from, for the remainder of the term, which will be the remaining 33 months, it, that will be determined on how much you'll be paying principal and interest uh, from that point on. Now, remember, uh, one thing to emphasize, this loan is an open loan. So at any point in time, you can pay it off outright without any penalties. So there is no restriction on when you can pay off the loan. So say, for example, even if it's within a year of you uh, borrowing the funds, you can completely pay it off and there's no uh, fees or any uh, additional costs uh, associated with paying it off early. So that's uh, one of the flexible options available to uh, through this program. And also you can make lump sum payments. So for example, if you borrow 15,000 and then you know, each month you, you've got your minimum payment of 63 or $65, and you want to make uh, you know, additional uh, lump sum payment of say $500, now that $500 or $5,000 will be applied directly to your principal. So it means that it lowers your principal amount and thereby in the long term, lower the um, amount you pay over the duration of your term. And then, you know, if you uh, consistently do that or you want to pay it off at any point, you can certainly do that. Now we work with Alterna. Uh, we are not a bank ourselves. So we work with our financial institution called Alterna Savings and Credit Union. They are our banking partner. So once you go through the application process, get approved through us, it will go to the last stage where Alterna will do their necessary um, you know, assessment. And then uh, you will then be required to open an account with Alterna Savings. And then um, once that is done, we will arrange for the uh, loan uh, dispersal appointment, which happens via Zoom. And you sign your your loan uh, your, doc, your loan documents, and then they process your 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 um, your loan to go into that Alterna account. So that Alterna account is the same account that you're going to use to repay the loan each month until your loan is fully paid off. Now the opening of the account it happens at the branch that that is nearest to you. Uh, so depending on whether you're North York or in Mississauga. Whichever branch or alternate branch is closest to you, that's where they will arrange for you to go and have the account opened there. Now, once you've opened the account, you know you will have access to online banking. You can do whatever uh, transactions you need to do uh, virtually, and uh, just make sure that on the due date of your payment, if there is money in your account uh, sitting there to be deducted, whether it's a holiday or not. You just need to make sure that you have the appropriate and the correct amount in the account. Now, if you do not have the, um, the money in your account uh, on the due date and that due date passes, there is a, a, a fee that is charged to, for late payment or for non-sufficient non funds, and that is $45 that will be paid. So that's a penalty that uh, most banks uh, do have. Uh, which you will need to cover as well, in addition to your loan, regular monthly loan payment. So to avoid that, you just make sure you need to have 
the uh, required amount in your account before the due date. So I talked about the application process uh, in terms of submitting your application. What then will happen is once you submit your application, access staff, uh, one of those staff uh, is myself that can, uh, you know, uh, will assist uh, individuals one to one to make sure that they uh, have all the documentation that we need. And then once that, uh, you know, we have determined that you've got that documentation in and we've got what we need, we will then uh, arrange for your interview with our loan review committee uh, members, so there are loan officers that will meet with you on a virtual uh, interview in via Zoom. It, this is more just to get more information, just to determine, uh, and that's uh, how the, uh, the process works, is for them to uh, you know, uh, make uh, sure that uh, the, we, the due diligence process is, uh, is uh, followed and they make a decision. And once that decision is made, then we'll move to that next stage, the last stage of getting your funds uh, dispersed to you. Now, this process usually takes out, say, uh, on average, about uh, two and a half to three weeks uh, on average. So, you know, just make sure that uh, you, if you're planning on submitting an application, you gather all your documents submitted. The sooner we have all the documents in place, the faster we can also move things along in terms of uh, arranging all the uh, um, interviews and then moving things along through the process to ensure that uh, we can meet your uh, timeline. And if you've got a deadline to, uh, submit, to uh, register by or to pay by, just make sure that you give enough time from that date to allow for the uh, processing of the application, submission and processing of the application. All right, so just a quick recap of the application process. You submit your application online and then we, with the required documents, and then we'll review it at access as staff and then reach out to you to ensure that we have everything we need. And then we'll move it to our loan review committee. Once that is done, the interview is done and the decision is made, we will then move it to the last stage, which is uh, with Alterna, where they will uh, get uh, uh, everything set up. Uh, if we, once they have, they have cleared, uh, they will get you to up, open your account and then we'll do the dispersal uh, appointment via Zoom. Just to explain the, these terms in terms of what your options are, are in terms of uh, the repayment and what uh, you can expect if you don't make your payment on, on time. Now the loan will help you build your credit uh, if, uh, and also further enhance your credit as well because it will report to Equifax. Uh, so Alterna will be reporting that uh, payment activity to Equifax. So it, when you look at your, when you review a credit file, you will see uh, that loan also reflected there. So that's another a good thing that uh, as long as you maintain your loan in good standing. So that's uh, uh, our ways that you can connect with us. I'm also on LinkedIn and uh, the organization as well. You can uh, connect with us on these various platforms and uh, certainly uh, looking forward to assisting you achieve your goals, achieve your dreams uh, so that you can uh, become um, what you uh, want to become in your career here in Canada. And uh, that's why this program exists and uh, to help you uh, move through that process. So happy to answer questions at this point and stop my share of this screen.